Hello, this is Adrian Crenshaw from IronGeek.com, and I'm going to be chronicling our trip down to Outer Zone, as well as the various events that are happening at Outer Zone. My accomplice for this weekend is Magellan, the low-tech mystic, and you're... What was that? If you, it's okay if you corrected me, because I think you had to correct me last time, and I still got it wrong. Okay. Um, you're going to be giving a presentation at this conference. What's it going to be on? Arduinos. So, it's like a continuation of your uh, presentation with Freaknik? Um, yeah, basically, yeah. It's just kind of um, going over uh, the fun stuff of Arduinos, why they're real fun to get into, why they're an easy kind of gateway into uh, hardware hacking and uh, electronics, kind of that get your feet warmed in the water, and you can also slowly find yourself getting into uh, rather complex projects and uh, really interesting things that uh, just slowly build upon each other snowball effect. Cool beans. I might ask you later on about doing some keyboard projects with them. Thanks. And uh, while we're on the subject of the various odds and ends we're doing, on our way down from, well, on my way down from New Albany, Indiana, we've been driving and the entire way we're going to be board driving with Wi-Fi both up. Yes, I know, kids it would be a better tool for this, but doing it from your phone is just so freaking convenient. So far, we're uh, a little bit just outside of Bardstown, Kentucky. Hope I'm not dropping too many docks there. And we have found 443 access points, which will be uploaded to Wiggle here shortly. Wiggle, wiggle! Six Wi-Fi of the beast. and I got stuck in a traffic, some like semi-trailer or something flipped up ahead of us. And so we've been stuck here. Luckily, we've been stuck here in traffic with some of the people like the con organizers. We're going to meet up with Sky Dog here shortly, a couple exits up, and uh, see what's going on. In the meantime, I've been spending some time bluejacking people that are stuck in traffic with us. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, we just got past the traffic jam, and strangely enough, the traffic jam allowed us to catch up with the organizer of Outer Zone, Sky Dog. There we go. Yeah, we uh, we spent a uh, good hour and a half on the side of the road okay. playing a little bit of Yagi tennis, uh, uh, a couple tennis balls and a Yagi antenna, a little impromptu session there. Uh, we're waiting on uh, Tyler Pitchford trip actually to show up now so we can get the uh, radios together and everybody can caravan down. We've got a couple of cars now uh, uh, added in, so that'll be a fun time. You know? He's g giving a presentation on people confiscating laptops at the border. Correct? Yes, exactly. It's a very, very interesting presentation. He did it at ShmooCon. It was very engaging, and uh, I think it's definitely going to be one of the uh, top talks of the con. Yeah, we'll probably get our video up before <laughs> the ShmooCon video's up. I hope so. Someone keeps bothering me about him. I wonder Sorry. About yeah, see, I, I only ask once a week or so. I uh, know it's more often than that, but it's well deserved. I, I have been lacking to get him done. So, but uh, yeah, we're going direct to DVD this time. So uh, as soon as we're done, we finalize, pull the disc. You can rip them that way and put them up. How cool beans. Go about them. I, I got me a laptop Core 2 Duo with a handbrake on it. I'm gonna copy off the files, then I'm gonna use handbrake to take the files from my hard drive and then compress them. Excellent, excellent. So we may not put any like headers or borders on them, yeah. but when I post them, I'm going to, you know, it's going to mention where it's from and all that stuff. Yeah. And That'll I, be fine. I, I plan on copying the, the, the text that's on the website describing each talk. Yeah. And that way everybody's plugs for the sites on, in there too. Good deal. Cool Sounds beans. Sounds like a plan to make. Well, it's going to be caught up with you. And how, how long until trip's going to be here? Uh, to be here? To be here. Well, um, apparently vegans can't tell time uh, so, or, or, read or, or read mile markers, so I'm hoping he'll be here soon. Some, do we have a... a he just hit 75. He just got on 75, so he's about three or four minutes out, hopefully, and uh, if that's the case, then uh, hopefully he'll be here uh, in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, I like Trip, but I have to say this. Have you ever watched one of those like, uh, documentaries on human evolution and they start talking about... And at this point, humanity started eating more meat <laughs> and it allowed for better brain development. Have you ever yeah. seen those documentaries? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm just vegan. kidding, Trip. We love you. Please don't sue me since you are a lawyer, but you're not my lawyer. <laughs> We're currently on our way. I get and essentially, we are doing an IRC over CB radio, I believe.
Yeah. Well, we're here and uh Yeah. Oh you gotta stay here. <laughs> you know, it's probably not a good sign if the hotel in the neighborhood where you're having the con is right next door to a gas station that has like bulletproof Lexan windows all around the teller. That's kind of, you know, just a little disturbing, I think. Just, you know, my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Show us, hey, show us your sis, yeah, oscilloscope. Pretty cool. Thank you. We were talking about your videos earlier. Oh, okay. Me and apparently some dude that lives. I'm gonna go take a Okay. Um, apparently some dude that lives south of Atlanta. Um, was commenting about how you happen to always, you wait until everybody's really drunk and start taking videos. Then you yourself get drunk, and I commented on the great video you have of me showing off my manly weightlifting skills. And uh, all of a sudden he knew who I was. So I'm, oh, I'm okay. honored that you have brought me into the lives of many a people <laughs> with my uh, lifting the bar. Well, you know, I'm, you I'm know, glad but, I could uh, but I pump your say, social standing at HackerCon. I can say... I got a little something now. <laughs> so not a con. If I get there and I got a weightlifting machine, you're on. All right. I'm challenging you, Iron Geek. You're going down. <laughs> okay. We're actually at the con now, and here are my roommates for this convention. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and we've got my current uh, working invention going on. This is the Iron Geek crotch cam. <laughs> As you can see. Sexy. It's a little laggy, but it'll work That's in a pinch. <laughs> the way this band basically works is, of course, we have a D-Link wireless cam. And I've improvised a little bit. I got a 12-volt battery. From an uninterruptible power supply, a car adapter to drop the 12 volts down to 5 volts, and I've basically soldered wires together to make the connection on the power to my D-Link. And hopefully, if I can find an access point that actually allows access through most of the convention, I'll just walk around with this uh, cod piece on. Okay. We have the Iron Geek personal crotch cam. <whistles> it was me moving around. That's not you a know, you normally my crotch doesn't want to see that particular scene. <laughs> Essentially what we have is a wireless webcam from D-Link. Got that strapped in strapped to a 12 volt uh, <laughs> a 12 volt to 5 volt adapter that's meant for cars. And I've essentially soldered all the wires to the right connectors, and I have an uninterruptible power supplies battery. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to walk around the convention with this as long as I can find one stable SID to tell it to connect to and stay connected to during all the con. You're down. So, you know, we'll see how well it works. We've got a room party going on right now, and I'm about to interview. What's your name? Rampage, Michael. Michael, yeah. are you going to tell me about the Plain Text Info Project? Yeah, um, we got... Let's step outside. Oh, God, step I'm outside sorry. for a second. Yeah, we're currently got uh, a <laughs> half LM. It's currently used uh, by like, like, Medicine Boy get, or an exchange key. Like when, you, like when you go and visit a site and somebody uses malicious code to send you to another site, you can use that to grab their password. It's the first seven bytes of the password, which is LM. So then you take that and it comes with a custom salted key. And you use the... That's the challenge that it actually... Right. It's the kid challenge key, yeah. Puts so, with the uh, actual LM hash and then sends back. Right, yeah. But you're making them use a, a certain given challenge, so, it, so yeah. you basically can build a rainbow table. Yeah. Um, yeah, Plaintext does. It's pre-salted. That's, that's Rampage. <laughs> yeah. I think like, the salted key is... <laughs> It's like, uh, like one through eight, one, one, two, two, and it keeps going. And then you just build a rainbow table for the first one through seven, because that's all you're getting is seven. You only get the first seven bytes. And then with LM. With LM, yeah, because it's only LM. And then that's why it's half LM, because you're only getting half of it. 
So we're currently getting tables building for that. And, I and this will be available online so where people can just submit a hash and try to crack it? The project's still building up. Yeah. Um, currently, um, we're, we're trying to build with trusted admins. Once we get to where we're uh, comfortable, we will release an open source code, recruit the whole internet in to help build tables, word lists, and other techniques to prove weak, weak encryption is uh, no longer needed on the internet, that you know the vendors have got to step up and use a real powerful encryption because they're leaving their consumers vulnerable. So again, it's really nothing you know, nothing malicious in this, in this intent, but just to prove a point that the current encryption mechanisms used in most operating systems that are publicly available aren't secure. So the end user is really left vulnerable due to the lack of proper encryption. Now, modern... Uh well, uh, mixing my metaphors, uh, modern uh, versions of Windows, let's say this and so forth, I know they turn off LM hash storage by default. They also don't pass LM hash, as I imagine. It depends. It really depends. I mean, it depends. If it's in a domain and they have older machines, they have to be backwards compatible. So they have to keep LM. I have to keep it, but what's the default uh, policy on what to send? It depends on your policy management, but uh, the, the, the default policy, from what I understand currently, is LM for backwards compatibility, unless you explicitly imply NTLM, which is more like an MD5 password, which is not had the seven character weakness. But with the proper word list and technology, and with the fact of using PS3s, video cards, and large SQL databases, you're still, you're still vulnerable to brute force, uh, easily up to 14 characters. So, I mean, really, your passwords really have to be, if you trust the technology that's behind the common vendors, you really need to make your password okay. a phrase that's beyond 15 characters to guarantee that you're not using LM because anything past 14 characters is going to force it to use NTLM. But, I mean, and again, nothing that the plaintext.info project does is considered malicious, but, again, we want to bring awareness, and we also want to help out the penetration testers and researchers understand the weaknesses in current encryption schemes and provide a method to prove you know, prove password weaknesses beyond the, the standard thing. I mean, if you dump the current password database from a domain controller and you're an administrator, you wouldn't get to that unless you were the administrator because it's in the land. Um, you can really go through and make sure your policies are working correctly if you had access to a large database of not just rainbow tables, but you know, um, fast word lists, Large database word list, NTLM encryption, PS3 is used to breaking password encryption. A lot of your NVIDIA um, video cards with the CUDA software from Insider Pro will also break encryptions at up to 250 hashes per second. So I mean, you, you really have to make sure that your encryption is properly, you know, properly applied, and that your password strength is really there. Yeah, I haven't actually gone into the registry in Vista and see what, which particular settings it has as far as. What it negotiates for doing the challenge response. How much harder is Intel M2 to create a similar scheme? Well, it's almost night and day between LM and Intel M. Um, Intel M and MD5 are pretty much the same basic philosophy. It's a fixed hash. Um, the only way to salt it would be like a half challenge, but again, there's always the flaw that your half challenge server has a pre known salt that's always going to be the same salt. And LM is always uppercase. So right, LM is stored in seven character intervals of uppercase only. So anything is even more and, and if you go to Iron Geek's site, you'll see some of the information on uh, Kate and Abel, how he can uh, brute force passwords in LM case. And most of the sites out there, you can submit an LM password. I know if you go to the IRC site of plaintext.info on the IRC channel, uh, we can we can break any LM password. I think usually in under three yeah, seconds. Yeah, I had a video. I I, uh, I have a presentation. I ended up putting a video before it on a. Uh uh, cracking passwords. I did it for some cybersecurity summit up right. in yeah. Indiana, and the whole breaking it into seven characters. Uh, uh, two seven uh, one LM hash that's say 14 characters long is actually easier to crack than one eight character long password that's right. not stored in that particular way. Because well, whether you're cracking two seven ones, two seven character right. passwords when you're cracking LM. That's right. because, because they're all uppercase. Because they're uppercase. So you, you, by doing all uppercase, you've eliminated 26 possibilities of lowercase. Because you've stored in all uppercase. So at that point, you have 26 uppercase characters possible, numeric, and the special characters. And if you really want to get crazy, we do do European symbols and other, other language keyboards. Because you're not just dealing with one type of keyboard. It's not just ASCII too. So that's out there. And again, I mean, we all follow. We all How about using Alt and Numpad? 
Um, you can make tables for almost anything nowadays. You can, but we're talking about huge, huge data sets. Correct, but you're only talking about seven characters now, then. So really, how many, how many combinations do we get? Well, let's say you can type in, you can't really necessarily, but anything in uh, the 256 characters is ASCII. Correct. I don't believe you can use some of them, but... Um, well, beyond that, you can use Euro symbols, uh, German, uh, you have the German language with special characters, Spanish, Russian. Because yeah, there's a way of getting Unicode as well in there. There's Unicode, yeah, yeah. Windows will support Unicode. But again, you really are still, de- you can build a table set for each type. Remember, if you're doing a client server distribution, you can have 100 clients each holding 40 gigs of rainbow tables, and there's nothing you can't break. Just like the SETI folding, the SETI home, and then the folding for the genome, the human genome. There's a lot of different client server architectures you could set up where you could have people hosting all over the world rainbow tables where, and this is what Plaintext has done in the past where everybody that agrees to host a cracker will host their own rainbow tables. When a hash gets submitted, it gets sent out to everybody. The first one back replies back that they broke it, moves on to the next hash. So when you do a client server distribution, you don't need 40 terabytes of rainbow tables when you have 4,000 people hosting so many gigs. And that's where the power of uh, distributed networking works. And while we're on the subject of cracking, I recently saw some news that there's going to be a new version of Loftcrack. But at this point, what's what's the point since there's John, there's Kane, there's various other tools from, like, what, Password Insider? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree there is a lot of people out there. And, and rainbow tables are becoming less powerful due to the fact that uh, processors such as parallel processors and pro, uh, PS3 systems and the video cards can brute force at enormous, enormous hashes per second. So eventually rainbow tables will become obsolete. But again, like the plaintext.info setup, we're not just using rainbow tables, we're using rainbow tables word list. We're also using some of the video card hacking techniques that Insider Pro has set up. And uh, we're really trying to expand. Again, we're not looking to do anything malicious, but we're basically going out there. We're, we've been told it can't be done and we're proving it can't be done. And again, I mean, we do an honest hash submission, but we do limited hash submission to make sure that nothing evil is happening. And, you know, nobody has unlimited access to the database. But, you know, the whole end goal, the whole end game really is to support the pen testing community, bring awareness to password and encryption security, and basically to take the industry to the next level. All right. Well, we're going to play any websites before we finish here? Man, there's, there's, there's way too many. Um, Hack5 had us on in the early episodes. Of course, Iron Geek, because they always support us. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, our, our website, plaintext.info, is always there. And soon we'll probably be merging with hashkiller.com, which is a German site. And we hope to support more languages in the future because we understand not everybody has native English-speaking language. But, of course, anytime you step into the German territory, you deal with different laws. And, again, we're trying to do our Yeah, they have best. some really restrictive uh, draconian laws against uh, hacking tools, quote-unquote, whatever that particularly means. Right. And we really try to work with the laws within, like, the FBI and Interpol. And we will work with law enforcement. Again, we're not malicious. So, I mean, if anybody's abusing anything we put out there, we will support you know, law enforcement in prosecuting illegal activities. We're not about supporting illegal activities. But we do want to assist the pen testing community to make sure they can do their job correctly and to prove that, you know, a lot of the encryption is currently used a day or week. Cool. Thank you much for your time, guys. Thanks, Eric. Pre-con setup. <laughs> Maybe a couple hours as far as trying to figure out how to get the drum apart without destroying it. Uh, you know, just uh, hooking up the multimeter to figure out what the polarity of the sensors were, make sure I had the right reading. Uh, I'm a hardware guy. Um, code is my extreme weakness. It's what I'm learning right now how to do. So it takes me more time to write the code than it does to put all this stuff together. So. Um, I have the code, and I would love to show you. Um, this code can get the uh, almost multiple inputs. So no, I can't smack two of them at the same time and get them to light, but within 75 milliseconds, yeah. So good enough. I'd really like to get some projects going with that. Fuck you. It started out in a hotel room, and now in our fifth year, it's actually in a conference room. And uh, the space is going to be a I just sit around and come up with graphics and crap. You guys and the speakers are the one that makes things, the, the stuff actually happen. I just I make it look good. Um, 
So uh, if, you, if you come in the door and you've got your badge, you got the kilogram. How, does everybody like the other zone bunny and keeps going and going? Yeah. This is the right yeah, uh, go ahead and label it. Uh, sort of to go along with that. I'm not sure what to label it. All right, let's see what's on the QR code for the T-shirt. Doesn't work yet, according to Scott. Doesn't work yet. You haven't tested it. Yeah, it's not recognizing it. Oh well. All right, I'm ripping as they give the presentation, so hopefully I'll be able to post these probably before I actually post this video I'm making right now. And it appears that the Iron Geek Cam, the crotch cam is still functioning just fine, though it's no longer on my crotch because, quite frankly, it's getting uncomfortable. Okay, we're now the actual day of the con, and the uh, talks have all been recorded. I totally got what's left of them um, encoding upstairs. And I love the thing about Outer Zone is it's a donation-based con. So basically, people pay for the people who can't pay, and that supports the con. So my understanding, a fair number of matters comes out like Sky Dog and Crew's pocket. But it, it's been a very good time. It's a little small. The talks have been really good. I said I'll have them up here shortly. And we'll probably see a few other things during the party session of the con. But pretty much the technical part of the con is now over, and you'll be able to see that online shortly. Or probably before you can see this video. This video, so explain us what the fuck you got here, low tech. Okay, I've got the lily pad, which is an Arduino. Oh, I should say Morgellon, so no one's Dude, confused. I don't need more light in here. Do you need more light? You don't need no more light. I need more light. The dark is good. I don't okay. know. I'm kind of afraid of the dark. Hey, <laughs> boy. Oh my god. You should be afraid. Be very afraid. This is the Arduino lily pad. It is basically an Arduino based uh, microcontroller. It's the same as uh, the regular Arduino. You can sew it into something. But it's it's got using a, a smaller microcontroller. I see it's uh, embedded, uh, whereas the other one is a uh, dip socket. And so basically the concept with this Arduino lily pad, uh, which was made by Leo Buckley, I may be saying that completely wrong, but uh, you notice it's got a bunch of holes here instead of the, uh, the heads. So what you can do is you could put this onto your shirt and use something like conductive thread which is just the same as wire so there's different types of conductive thread you have uh... What, so they got like they have conductive materials iron embedded uh, in it? Um, some have copper, some have silver um, they use different materials, some have uh, different qualities different thicknesses have different uh, resistance values as far as I believe this has an 18 ohm resistance in the value, but so basically the concept is, is I take this thread and I wrap it through the holes with the needle a bunch of times through my shirt, and then I hook it up to uh, something else like an LED, and I have a T-shirt that blinks LEDs or does a bunch of different things. Because so we all like blinky lights. Everybody likes blinky lights. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, but the idea is that you know I'd have uh, also like a power supply or something wired into my shirt, so I could remove the battery. I could throw this into the washer and because it's using thread. Um, some people like to put something like puffy paint or something over the thread to help. Uh, so like when you wash it, you don't lose the conductivity of the thread. But basically, um, yeah, you can take out the power supply, the battery. You can wash this. You can dry it. And then you can use it all over again. You can put the battery back in the, uh, the bottom of the shirt. That's where a lot of people like to, to stash the battery just because the weight's at the bottom. What Mr. about Spielberg? What, yeah, close right? zoom up. Yes. What, have, you, have you heard about the, 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 the freaking shot. hamsters they rigged up with nanotubes? And um, they, they put the sweater. It's a series of tubes. Expo say, calm down. Sarah, explain to everybody what we're doing right now. We are at Outer Zone and we're being hackers. We're getting it on. Okay. I'll carry so the cups. You've got one cup to deal with. What's the next step in our little uh, grand adventure here? No, we're just taking the stairs. We're going to grab the other one. Oh, we're getting. Oh, you had me. What are we doing? We're getting cola. Is there somewhere? Cola. Cola. 
At least you didn't call it what podcast does this do? Oh, I mean, dot com. It's not only a podcast, but I usually do c- computer security videos, but I also chronicle the, the conventions I go Just to. Just don't call me by my home name. Yeah, please, Megaphone. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Alright, we now have a shitload of people in the elevator con. Yeah. Who's gonna do the first presentation? Who the fuck is shushing me? I will talk about mass sequel injections. <laughs> They're bad. I you shouldn't do them. This is the first time. Oh. Yeah. I have nothing else to do on a Saturday night. <laughs> I get more technical to this. Explain to me what exactly was going on now. Okay, so when we were at Freepnik, we had the hula hoop contest, the drunken hula hoop contest. Uh huh. And <laughs> there was the woman who was trying to get the hula hoop back from me, and I didn't want to give it up because I was really, really drunk. So basically, God fix, he bought the hula hoop off of her from me. Oh, nice uh, of for me, yeah, which was really nice of him. But I was so drunk that I brought the hula hoop back to the room, and I wake up the next morning, and I'm kind of get out of bed, and there's dollar bills all over the floor, and a hula hoop. And yeah, it looks like, like you have to wonder when there's dollar bills all over the floor. Right, and I'm like, some shady shit went down last night. <laughs> That's all I can see at your level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Conan. No. <laughs> what is what best in life? The yak make? I don't know. Because because you crush your enemies. You see them driven before you, the and they hear the lamentations of the dead. Like wrap-up session. Uh, probably gonna go eat an IHOP or Waffle House or something here. Hopefully I hook up with Skydog uh, get my thumb drive back. Has all the videos on it from Nauticon 2009. Not Nauticon! Ah! I'm gonna edit the hell out of this. I better just delete this one. Post-con wrap-up. We're about to head out to IHOP. You don't even know. I was protecting that toilet so well last night. I I was I was freaking out because I thought I didn't really drink that much. Why am I throwing up? Well, I you were praying four, to the porcelain goddess. I was, but I smoked four Maybe packs of cigarettes story. yesterday, and um. Maybe that's why. I don't do that. I do. Gotcha. Taco Bob says what? don't. He's a she now. All right. I don't think anybody really needs to see that. Hello. Here, how about this hey, right here? Iron Geek. Iron Geek. Here we go. Ah. I got it. Hey. How going to go to the Geek Mecca known as Thrive? Dude, we make an ugly, ugly couple. We make some pretty babies. Don't say that when you're behind me like that. He gets. Okay. Out of zone five is over with, and I am very, very tired. Um, did you have a good time there, Low Tech? I had a blast. Very good time. Thank you, uh, Sky Dog, and everybody that makes that happen. Such a blast. So well worth the, uh, the six-hour drive and the sitting in the traffic. And very awesome. Very awesome. And I like the ICMP Echo request that particular comment. And uh, more than likely, we'll <laughs> see you next year.
Hello, this is Iron Geek from IronGeek.com, and we're currently traveling up to Nauticon 2009. I, Dossman here, is my chauffeur for the uh, event. Uh, and all the stuff that him and the Bloomington Fools group have packed along. And believe it or not, this is actually packing light for um, <laughs> Dossman and crew. <laughs> But I'm going to try to report on various happenings that are happening around the con, and uh, definitely going to spend some time at the lock picking pavilion, and uh, hopefully have a good time. Hey, Zach! Hey! Who's your passenger there? Oh, this is Timmy. Um, I was on my way out of town, and I saw this kid on the side of the road holding a sign that said 2600 or bust. He asked if he could come along, and I was like, sure, I'm heading that way. Let me tell you, this guy is a lot of fun. Ah, yeah. All right. Well, I don't know if I want that in the video. I'm okay. I'm well, sorry. We'll catch you later. <laughs> So, Dossman, do you have any idea where we're at? I think we're in Cleveland. Okay, that sounds like a... That'll at least get us close. Ooh, lights, flashy stuff. I don't think I've ever seen this part. What, you never seen this part of Cleveland before? <laughs> this block, I guess. <laughs> okay, I think that is our destination right there, the Wyndham Hotel. Arriving at address 1260. I'm here at Nauticon 2009 with Jason Scott, and I've strangely enough got him to do a rant. Yeah. Well, you have. You can't even tell that's me. You can't even tell. You have to listen to the voice. Go all where in the top hat. Now, I guess in the point of fact, well, no, it's, it's so dark. Wait, wait. The profile, the top hat, the profile, you know, in the uh, silhouette. Right. Okay. No, this looks like making the video on how to make videos. Yeah, I know. Apparently, I suck at it. I suck at the online. Setting up the lockpick table. Hey, Zachy. Yeah. Hey. What you got going on? Well, I'm getting ready to set up a lockpick wall here. I'm just dealing with some technical difficulties here with the screws. Uh, they're wanting to strip really bad. So, I'm going to back them out. I'm going to try to uh, construct it by hand. We'll go back to that later on, Shane. Uh, I don't know if I want to ask any questions about this one. <laughs> what are we working on, DOS man? Lockpicking curves. Trying to put the final covering on this one. And you're going to use this for like speed picking contests? Uh, yeah, something like that. I'm not sure what the grand plan is yet, but uh, it should be useful. That's Shane's deal? Yeah. So I think the idea is what the like pick a lock, pick a lock, spin it, pick a lock, pick a lock, spin yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, the, the the thing is for someone that might be new to lock picking is we don't like have really hard locks. What fun would that be if you're just learning to pick? So they're really relatively easy locks to pick. So you know you shouldn't be afraid of it. You know oh lock whatever. You'll, if once you are able to pick a lock, you'll be able to run through it really quick. So. No, no. And the registration table, I think it's not quite open yet, but will be shortly. Long, fat in years. Um, thank you all for coming. First things I wanted to announce uh, is a schedule change. Unfortunately, Guy Rush could not be here this year due to some serious medical issues to give his processing talk. So, uh, Garrigate will be giving a uh, workshop. So, what is it we have here? So, I put together a purse with an LCD screen off of a DVD player. And inside, I have a Nintendo on a chip on one of these video game controllers that have a thousand Nintendo video games built into it. And then I hacked it so I could use real Nintendo controllers. I put Velcro on it so I could have quick access to the to the controller. Cool. I also put a Commodore 64 DTV in here so I could switch it over to do the, the Commodore 64, which that's the one I designed. It's the C64 DTV. 
So I don't have it playing right now because it's really noisy because it's always going. Da da da. What's what's it look like on the inside? Yeah, here. If you open up without destroying anything. Yeah, it's not very practical for holding um, uh, much cargo in it. You know, I can hold a couple credit cards and stuff, but that's about it. But so there's there's a circuit board for the LCD controller, and then there's the uh, you said the two circuit boards for the Nintendo on a chip. Now, how much do the Nintendo's on a chip cost? Well, it's a it's a joystick that you can go. Uh, Nintendo's not very happy about these actually, so they. They get this, these companies that import them get shut down from time to time. I saw some stuff like that on Deal Extreme, but it wasn't like you know something you could homebrew. It was like all one unit, but yeah, it was one unit. So I cracked it open, and then uh, since it's Nintendo on a chip, you can find the lines for doing the serial protocol to the controllers. So I just I put some connectors on. There's actually a connector where I can plug in different Nintendo controllers. Well, this is definitely the coolest fashion accessory I've seen so far this con. Yeah, so. Then you Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. You. Lots of blinky lights. I like with blinky lights. Shower at home, you can't play with big face or anything. Once again, not going to ask. Oh, the pretty skyline. We have all the black lungs out here. So now I was told this is a separate Say hello, section big. of commands. I hello. He's almost a man! And, uh, and, and like I'm driving through this crazy town and there's like Camaros 
and people with mullets and girls hanging up the tee top, waving craft singles. And I'm like, this is the town that I'm going to buy jeans in. So if you look at my jeans, you're like, wow, did Al go to Wayback Machine and buy his clothes? Yes, yes I did. It's called Canada. So, <laughs> So pretty good. Okay, I'm here with uh, Natacon Radio, and your name is? I'm Inspired Chaos. Inspired Chaos, and I need to talk to you later on about uh, some other issue, but uh, <laughs> uh, this is Zach. Alright, uh, well, you can find me next door. What's house. your name, sir? Is that video? I'll talk to you later. Yes. You okay with video? Or you hate video? It's alright. I don't know if I'm supposed to pose and like... What did, what, uh, Alright, we've got Natacon Radio going on, on here and all the equipment, and uh, what's, your, what's your handle? Uh, I go by Colonel Panic, or KP, to shorten it, but my real name's Suter, Chris Suter. Cool. So I just hang out here. Colonel, do you post on Benrev ever? Do what Benrev? Do you post on Benrev ever? Ben what? Benrev. Binary oh. Revolution. Huh. Binary Revolution. I've, I've seen the name Colonel Panic someplace else before as a handle, but... I've been around here for six years, so... So what, what are we doing here on the, uh... What's, explain the whole concept of Nauticon Radio. Nauticon Radio? For those who don't know, I'm recording this for my own video podcast. For the past few times, it's just been, uh, we're hanging out, we're having a good time. We want to record what the atmosphere's like at the con. But you can't really smell the atmosphere here, because you don't sure, really want to. Yeah, yeah, really. I'm con Funk Awareness. They just had these Cthulhu ribbons I'd hand out. They were little green, uh, you know, awareness ribbons, but I cut little tentacles in them and put googly eyes. I mean, look like Cthulhu. You know who Cthulhu is, right? Yeah. But it may look like Cthulhu. <laughs> look up, Google up sometime Con Funk Awareness Ribbon, and I was passing those out at like Freaknik a few years back. Are they doing it here? No, I, I didn't make any for this year. Oh, all right. But I have a web page about the Con Funk Awareness Ribbon. All right, so yeah, we, we basically try to record the atmosphere of the con, at the con, during the con, whatever's going on. We try to record it. So you, and get, you we're smell trying to the stream. feel and the taste of Nauticon. That's well, right. you get the audio. You don't really get the smell unless you're here. And the taste, yeah. you don't get unless you hang out with Al. Oh, oh, well played. Ooh, where is Al? Al is here. He's yeah, downstairs. He's downstairs. Bullshit. Bullshit. I, seen him. I saw him. Yeah, he's at the Shook the man's hand. Heard him make some perverted comments. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> well, he tried to take my little boy mannequin away. That doesn't surprise me. No, no. He kept calling him twink. Ooh. That is a beautiful, beautiful pompadour. Thank you. And it's not not at full height. Well, yet. Yeah, it's going to need to grow. Well, my Viking look isn't exactly going full force yet because the beard hasn't grown out. Yeah. I'm working on it. It will. But that's not a con radio in a nutshell. Okay, it's day two, and I'm checking out the game room. 
And they got some old school Commodore action going on here. And I remember playing some uh, monster game where you could smash uh, different cities around the world like with Godzilla or King Kong and using this particular controller on my buddy's old Commodore. Right Where'd you get the daily WTF stickers? Oh, they're downstairs on the table. And of course I came up here to put up some of my uh, flyers for one of my little pet projects. This is only good for on the Nauticon network though. Hello, what's your handle? Michaela. Michaela. And where'd you get little Cthulhu Jr.? Um, the actual tattoo or the picture? Both. The picture I found online randomly and the tattoo was done by Dave at Adam Bob Tattoo in Willoughby, Ohio. Now that's Cthulhu Jr. I would assume that Cthulhu is his dad. Yeah. Does that make you his mother? Um, no. I have a babysitter. Ah, oh, okie dokie. So what do you do when a Cthulhu spawn misbehaves? Um, we sacrifice you. Okay, good plan. Around here you might have plenty of uh, fodder for that. Thank you. No, but that is one of my much, ambitions at some point in time. I don't think that it's, it's really all that amateur once you've been doing it for years and years on end. Um, I you wouldn't might not I, necessarily have the skills. Okay, okay, it. very true, very true. But I think you lose amateur status after, you know, after you so much time. Travis is trying to take a break. Travis is trying to take a break. Last year. Last year doing this. Okay, we got the crotch cam going in full effect. And we got it going on right here. Yes. Put it right there and picture and a picture and a picture and a picture. What's your handle, man? I'm uh, I don't really have one really calcium. The base. Uh, the kids are what? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm doing a video podcast box from some of the events at Nauticon. Uh, okay. Don't know how well this is going to show up, but I'm doing some uh, BT spamming at, uh, here at Nauticon 2009. Basically, it just says, I geek is spamming your phone or such. We'll see how well it works. See if anybody comes up and complains. I set the interval to like 30 seconds. And then like blinking lights that are like you're about to come. And Maria is great. Great town. Yeah. And you noticed all these indications, but still, there's all kinds of people that try to go through that like 80 I miles an hour. I was wondering. Oh, just really? It's it's called Dead Man's Curve for a reason. But you really like so so I'm getting in this into this curve, and you're already so going again. Me nothing. Colonel Panic totally is. Well, Nikon 2009 is over with. Did you have a good time, Doss Man? I certainly did. Cool beans, and we'll be most likely coming again next year. And uh, I guess the next hack of kind I know for sure I'm going to be at is going to be Freak Nick. Right. And I'm going to be at Louisville InfoSec. Uh, catch some of y'all then. I think I'm going to string this video in with my video of Matter Zone so I make one big presentation of both cons. Talk to y'all later.